Hey everyone, if you're new to the channel, my name's Dan and I do uh, vector graphics and stickers, like on the back there. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, brilliant, thanks for coming back, it's, it's helping me out. Uh, oh, what did you think to the, the pre-intro intro with the, uh, the sketch of the cowboy? I don't know. Was that a good good idea or not? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. If, uh, if you guys like it, I'll, I'll do some more for you. Uh, in this video, we're going to be doing the uh, Western shoot, or where I modify some text that's already on the PC, and we just play around with it and, and get some more mileage out of some old old fonts, uh, typefaces. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Leave me a like, give me a comment, whatever. See you in a little while. Right, let's get started. So what we're going to do is take some text and we're going to modify it slightly to give it that kind of Wild West look um, by adding some, I think they're called spurs or thorns, there's a few different names for them. They're basically triangles, but uh, let's see what we can do. Right, so we've got uh, Franklin Gothic Heavy, which is what I actually use for my thumbnails. So let's just type out the word Western. Let's make that white so we can see it a bit better. Uh, what we're going to do first is set up some guides, which you can do by going up to this uh, rule here and just pulling down. And we're going to look for the E, and we're going to set those up on the E. So that's like they're going to be that will set as our maximum height for the thorns spurs. In fact, yeah, this should be Spurs because this is a Western. And cowboys have Spurs on their boots. That's how my that's my logic, at least. Let's just get these nice and tight on the edge there. If your um, Inkscape doesn't have the guides around the edges here, if you just go up to View and then click on Guides and it'll put them in for you. Right, they're in place. So now we need to create uh, a box that's going to fit in those guides right across. So just drag anything out. Let's go, uh, let's make that a different colour. Let's make that red. And I've already got the opacity set. Let's make it 50%. And bring that into the guides and I've got this um, down the bottom which is the last option on um, snapping which is uh, toggle snapping to guidelines so that'll help us just line it up let's just make it a bit wider and zoom in let's just drop that top section down to that guide and that'll just keep things in place for us Let's shorten that a little bit. Before we go uh, much further, I just meant to uh, mention on the when you create your box as your template, uh, make sure you've got stroke paint. I'll just select it. Uh, stroke paint turned to off. You don't want to stroke around it because it's gonna it will cause uh, a little problem. So just fill, no stroke. And I'm going to zoom in to this end, Let's just deselect that. I'm going to hit B for the Bezier pen tool. And what you want to do is grab onto the top corner and then just guess, sort of in the middle. Actually, that's a little bit too steep. Let's just try it again. You want to be about something like that. And then snap onto the bottom one and back to the top. And then again, we don't want the stroke on. You just want the fill and we'll change that to green so we don't get confused with the other bits. Uh, now we're going to go into edit pass by nodes and what we want to do is make sure that that is right in the middle. So we're just going to click on each one of these, hold down shift And then we're going to go over to the alignment section. And you want this guy on the end, like the three in, in a line. 
distribute selected nodes vertically and that will make sure that the middle one is actually in the middle. So the next thing we want to do is put a little curve onto these just to add a bit of extra interest. So you're going to take the top one, just click on that, and maybe hold down control. And it's going to make it look messy, but we're going to put this one back on top of the node. Oh, and grab the other guy. And just slide him down maybe a third of the way, something like that. Do the same on the bottom one, hold down control and click and put the inner one back on the node and then just slide the other one in about the same way and you should have something that looks like that now I'm just going to grab this and move it out of the way and then we are going to control D and we'll keep that as the master, just keep that out of the way and go control D again so what we want to do is mirror this one. So we're going to hit this mirror, flip selected objects horizontally, or we'll press H, and that will give us the options. And every every one that we add to our lettering, we're just going to hit Control D. So let's just go. Let's pick this one up again. Go Control D, and now we can move move into position. So we can bring this down into our guides, and it should. Because I've got snap to guidelines, it will snap into place, and then this will run along these like a train on a track, so you can't get it wrong. So before we go any further, we need to make our uh, text a path because at the minute it's just text, and it won't you won't be able to use a union tool with it. So just select it, go to path and object to path, and then we can grab our little spur and snap it onto the edge there like that and you will need to go over to the nodes tool and just select the letter n so hold down shift pick up the letter n and now we've just got these two um, selected if you use the select tool it will pick up the whole letter word and the union tool won't work so let's just go path union and that's added that little spur on there. And now it's just a case of carrying on. Now you will have to make some artistic choices as you go because, uh, for example, the R, if I just pick up that, the R is not really going to work. It's going to be, you have to really shoehorn that one in. Um, and there's going to be a few like that that's really awkward to uh, achieve the effect on. Let's just we can do the back of the R though. Let's go to Nodes tool, hit Shift, pick up the R, Path Union. That's that one done. And of course, you can experiment with the size and shape. There's all sorts of things you can do. But I just thought for the tutorial, we would stick to the classics of Western look. So I'm just going to carry on, go through the, um, the text here. Uh, I'm going to come back to the S because that's uh, we can do something with that, but um, it's going to need an extra little bit of work and possibly the W. But uh, let's just get these two a few more done. Okay, so we're going to do the W next. Um, we're going to have to kind of shoehorn this one in. There's a few things we can do. We could either just tack it on there and oh, we'll just turn the snap to guides off for a second and just kind of bend it into position. But it's going to change the, the height of it.
just turn all the snapping off for a second. And of course, if you were doing a full alphabet, you could probably set some of these up specifically to do this. Um, because we're only doing one word, it's not really worth uh, creating some new ones. But if you're going to use the, the same typeface over and over, you could, of course, uh, spend a bit of time and make it all work. I'm just going to faff about with this a little bit, something like that. Now, because I've set this one up, all I've got to do now is Control D and flip that and fingers crossed if I just turn the snapping back on and slide this guy down here Oop, snap to guides that shouldn't be far out on this side something like that uh, okay so we can go back into the nodes shift path union and the same on this side path union and there we go oh. let's just duplicate that again because I've, I've used one of the others and control D again just bring him down onto the E There we go. And let's just move that red box out of the way. And we're looking something like. Okay, so let's tackle this S. This is gonna need a little bit of work because it's such a steep angle there. And um, because it's going to be the, the curve of the S is going to intrude into the shape we're not going to get much of the uh, spur showing so let's just rotate it and see what we can do we want to get it something like it might require we do a fair bit of work to make this look convincing right, let's just increase the size a little bit let's rotate it again I need these two points at the end to be inside the letter. I don't want those sticking outside because what will happen when I make this sticker, it's um, it's going to try and cut around them. So I need just this little guy here. So let's just try and stretch the point out without bringing those out too much. In fact, let's just go over to the nodes, nodes tool. And I think what we're just going to do is, because it's such a sharp angle uh, and a tight curve, if we go over to the nodes tool, I reckon if we just grab this point and pull it towards there, something, something like that. Let's just check that these points still live inside, which they do, or just... Let's just move him up a little bit just to make sure. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is control D because I don't want to have to do that again. Move this over this way, flip it. But which way? I might have flipped it too many times. I think I have. Oh no, I mean, like a stuck in a flip loop. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so let's just push this down to the, towards the bottom of that guide because it's at the top of that guide. And there's a gap there, so I need it at the bottom of this guide and a gap at the top. So that should look something like. And of course, I mean, you know, I, the quality of your, the end result is going to vary on how much time you're prepared to put in. But for this 
tutorial just to get the point across. I'm sure you you figured it out. So um, let's just click on that one. Shift and click on the S. Path Union and the same there. Path Union. Oh, actually, just a thought. I wasn't going to do the R, but um, maybe we could now. Let's just undo that. And control D. Let's move that out of the way. Path union. Let's just see because the, the R follows a similar kind of shape there. Let's just see if we can make that work for the R. Because I think we probably could get away with that. Yeah, I think we can. Make sure there's no others that we could use it on. No, that's okay. Not bad. Okay, so that takes care of the, the main body of the tutorial. I think you've got the point across that you can modify text quite easily if you can't find the font you're looking for. But I have just thought of a way we can improve this even more, make it even more Wild West. Uh, and that is going to be using the same spurs. I'll just zoom in. Let's just uh, go to the Select Tool and Control D on that. Deselect. If I just grab one of these guys and bring him across here. And then hold down Shift, pick up both of them. And go path union. And then we go go control D again to make a copy. I'm just going to show you something we can do to make it even more authentic. We use the same guides. I'm just going to eyeball it. it. Doesn't really matter for this one. I'm just going to put them about there. And we go back to the nodes tool and pick up the T. So we've got the diamond and the T, and we're going to go path. Difference. How good does that look? I'm going to do the rest of the uh, letters. I won't bother filming it because uh, I think you get the idea. But uh, yeah, let's get cracking and make the sticker up. Okay, so that's all cut out. Um, I'm, as always, using my D tape, application tape, transfer tape, whatever you want to call it. Um, always looking for new stuff, but this seems to be the best I've found so far. I'll, uh, I'll try and leave a link in the description for it. I'm using my um, ancient Morn safety rule. I've probably had this over 20 years. It's a great bit of kit. still make them, and they're really cheap as well. And uh, a scalpel. So let's get this sticker made up. Right, well that's it. It's uh, it's all done, and um, yeah, I hope you learnt a few things. Obviously, if you can find a, a font that will do the job that you want it to do, then use it. But there's techniques like these you can really uh, breathe new life into old fonts and and make them do things that you you don't you can't find on online or um, or even buy. So uh, yeah, hope you learnt something from it. If you did, leave me a like, 
Um, that'd be great if you're still watching. That's fantastic. Um, yep, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.